I'm Jim Vrabel. I'm the author of When in Boston, A Timeline and Almanac, and A People's History of the New Boston. And I'm here to talk some, about some of the statues and the public art in Boston. Sometimes the public art, the statues in Boston, are criticized for being somewhat dull. I always take offense to that, because I think if people knew the stories behind the statues, the human, the political, the social history behind the statues, they would see that there's a fascinating story to all of them. And I think the other thing that people need to see is that how closely interconnected all that political, social, personal history is in Boston. The three statues on the West Lawn of the State House have fascinating stories of their own. Henry Cabot Lodge, his statue stands only a few feet from the house at 31 Beacon Street, where he grew up. Lodge graduated from Harvard College. Harvard Law School was the first PhD at Harvard University. He was called Boston Incarnate. And he was particularly known for his uh, reluctance to admit immigrants to the United States, yeah. which is ironic because two statues over is that of John F. Kennedy, who was the great grandson of Irish immigrants. Kennedy's grandfather, John F. Fitzgerald, was a newspaper boy. He later became a congressman, mayor of Boston, and he ran against Lodge for Senate in 1916, losing to him then. But Kennedy, his grandson, beat Lodge's grandson for the same office, U.S. Senate, in 1952. Fitzgerald died in this building over here that was the Bellevue Hotel in 1950. Behind me on my right is a statue of Anne Hutchinson, one of the most dynamic and considered one of the most dangerous women in Massachusetts history. She was a lay healer and a midwife, the mother of 14 children. She was banished from Boston in 1637 for having diverse views very prejudicial to the church and its ministers and for holding meetings not fitting for her sex. And she said, God will ruin you, your posterity, and this state. Hutchinson was later forgiven. The statue was installed in 1922 and Governor Michael Dukakis pardoned her in 1987. Over my shoulder is Horace Mann. He was the first Secretary of Education for Massachusetts and he's known as the father of public education. He started the first statewide system of public schools and the first teacher training schools in the United States. He also founded the first graded grammar school and the first school with assigned seats. The other statue on my right is that of Daniel Webster. He was a congressman, senator, secretary of state, and one of the greatest orators of his time. But the installation of his statue was very controversial because of another speech he made, the 7th of March speech in 1850, in which he defended the fugitive slave law and the compromise of 1850 as necessary to keep the union together. This is the statue of Mary Dyer. She was a follower of Anne Hutchinson, and she was banished from the Massachusetts colony three separate times. But she returned each time, persuaded that her death was necessary. When she was dragged to the gallows on Boston Common, her screams were so loud that a drum company was ordered to play to drown them out. The crowd that attended her execution was so large that when people returned to the North End, the bridge over the Mill Creek collapsed under their weight. Because she was a Quaker, Dyer was denied a Christian burial and her ashes were scattered over Boston Common. This is the statue of General Joseph Hooker, a Civil War general. The decision to install the statue here was controversial. Hooker led a much larger army to defeat by smaller forces led by Robert E. Lee at the Battle of Chancellorsville. But he did lead troops, the Union troops, to victory at Lookout Mountain. He was popular, as evidenced by the fact that according to one account, 100,000 former Union troops marched in the parade at the dedication of the statue and a crowd of one million people attended. A woman who Hooker had unsuccessfully proposed to later stayed at the rooming house that was in the Amory Tickner house across the way. She later wrote, the irony of it, my former suitor staring through my bedroom window. The next time you're in Boston, stop at every plaque, stop at every statue and try and piece it all together because it's a jigsaw puzzle of history of people united in one place trying to make the city on the hill better and better each decade, each century.